Hey guys, Stephanie here with the Aeroponic Tower Channel and today I want to talk all things growing zucchini on an aeroponic tower garden. Aeroponics is a form of hydroponics so I use those interchangeably so if you hear me say hydroponic that's why but I am growing a ton of zucchini. It's one of my favorite foods, all different varieties. And I wanna show you how to care for your zucchini when you're growing it this way in a vertical aeroponic tower garden system. I find this to be one of the best ways to grow zucchini. I've grown zucchini for years in the ground and I have suffered from vine borers and powdery mildew. On the towers, so far, I have not had any issues with vine borers. There are minerals that are in this water, and when they touch the rock wool, it leaves a mineral sediment right on the rock wool and along the stem of the zucchini. And I don't know if that's why they don't mess with them, but so far, I have not had any issues with vine borers. As for powdery mildew, I do have a solution for that that I just came up with, and I will share that in a minute. When growing zucchini on an aeroponic tower garden, I feel like there's a huge savings versus when I was growing in the ground because growing in the ground, I would be starting 10, 15 plants just because my loss was so great. And then I would start zucchini every single month so that as those plants were overwhelmed with powdery mildew or got vine borers, I would have new plants ready to take their place. I was only averaging like two to four zucchini per plant before they were going to waste. So in ground was not working for me in the soil. Growing on an aeroponic tower garden, we don't have to use a whole lot of resources. We need a rock wool. This is woven lava rock and one seed. And this is what you get. And if for some reason your seed didn't come up, we know zucchini sprouts very quickly. So I can put another one in and reuse that same rock wool. There's no need to plant two and waste the seed when you're growing this way. So just be mindful of that. Seeds have gotten very expensive. So it used to be no big deal to plant three or four seeds per start and then just thin them out. But with the seed prices so high, I like to just do one seed and if for some reason it doesn't take, then I plant another one in the same rock wool and the rock wool can handle it just fine. I know this is ready to go in the tower. When I start to see roots on all four sides and there's roots on the bottom, and we've got this nice broad leaf span here. So this one can go into a tower. I'm gonna to clear out a spot and put this one in today. And to get this seed to germinate, I like to put all my seedlings in a container with a dome over the top and put them on a heat mat. But with things like zucchini, because they're so easy to sprout, you could put them in a little dome container with the lid on top and put them right at the base of your tower if it's warm enough outside and they will sprout just fine outside as well. I recommend starting them in the tower just because they get so much water in the tower and I watered this this morning so it's pretty wet but we don't want to drown our seed or expose it to too much water too early. We want it to have that nice root foundation on the rock wool before we put it in the tower so that these roots are ready to just take off. When I put this in the tower and start giving it nutrients it's going to grow super fast if I put it in just as a seed it could drown it could go through shock and the rock will come wash away sometimes because there's nothing substantial to hold it together all right so this zucchini plant right here is my oldest zucchini plant I actually almost ripped this out a week and a half ago the reason was it was completely infested with powdery mildew I was on the internet one day and came across a comment where someone had said they were using some of the tower garden nutrients to manage powdery mildew on their plants. I whipped up the recipe and I whipped up my own version of the recipe and started spraying it on my plants and it was working perfectly. I have very little powdery mildew on any of my plants. We had a full cloudy day yesterday with rain. So I knew when I woke up today, I was gonna have some powdery mildew. That's just how it is where we are. We're in the Appalachian Mountains technically rainforest here so i have noticed if i if we have cloudy rainy days the next day i'm going to see signs of powdery mildew so i was able to get the powdery mildew under control on all of my plants i posted the video with the recipe and just realized i had gotten some things wrong in there and i was recommending you use Myers as the soap base and found out that Myers is actually not a clean product at all. So I took that video down, I'll be remaking it. But what we're trying to do to deal with powdery mildew, and I'm gonna share the recipe in a moment, is change the pH on the surface of the plants. So powdery mildew doesn't like an acidic environment. So my thoughts were I was gonna add an acid to the top 
by using tower gardens pH balancers that we use to balance the pH in our towers. So if something looks off on my plants, Tower Garden gives us these pH plus and pH minus, and we can adjust the pH so our plants have everything they need and are well balanced. And when I had come across the Facebook post, I just knew they had mentioned they were using the pH products, but I didn't really pay attention to how they did it. So I kind of created my own, and I thought I was adding an, an acid to the surface because powdery mildew doesn't like acid. In fact, I was actually adding the base and lowering the pH, but I think that's just where the Lord gave me favor because the more I've experimented with it and thought about it, an acid on the surface could really cause some burning to the plants. I haven't tested it a whole lot because I don't want to risk it with these plants. And I did some deep dive and the, re the reason the pH positive, which actually lowers the acidity was working is because powdery mildew doesn't like to be messed with as far as the pH period, whether it's acidic or base. So I have found by lowering the acidity, it's actually working really well. I think that comes with less risk than making it more acidic on the surface as far as burning the plants in the sun. And here's what I was using, which I'm changing. So this was just a Myers bottle that I had purchased and it was empty. So a 16 ounce bottle, I'm no longer go going to be using the Myers because of some of the ingredients I found in it. And I was taking a cap full of the Myers soap. I'm now switching that to Dr. Broner's, a cap full of Dr. Broner's. So maybe two teaspoons of Dr. Broner's soap in here. And then we're gonna add the pH plus from Tower Garden. If you are not an aeroponic Tower Garden or you use a different system, you can buy just the pH plus from Tower Garden. It's not very expensive. It lasts you a very long time. So I will link that below in the description, but you use two capfuls. So 16 ounce bottle, two teaspoons or so of Dr. Broner's, not Myers, and two capfuls of this. And that has been getting rid of the powdery mildew just incredibly for my zucchini. It's unbelievable. This plant is producing one, two, three, four. I have five zucchinis that are growing on this one plant and all of that would have been wasted. Only one is technically ready to be harvested and I'd like it to get bigger. So all that food would have been wasted because I was ready to pull this out. So this has been working for me. Let me know in the comments if it works for you. Um, just a simple formula with some simple ingredients and it's helping me take back control of my zucchini and not lose them like I have in the past. The way I treat it, when there's an outbreak, I've been treating the top and the bottom of every plant every day for two or three days until I notice it's completely gone. And then every three or so days, I come do a light spray on the plants. And I will show you guys what that looks like at the end once these are cleaned up. Um, because it rained yesterday and we have a little bit more, if I find some leaves that are really heavy, I'll just cut those off because I do want to thin these out so they have good airflow. Um, but other than that, we want to keep a maintenance spray on these. If I know rain's coming, I may spray them the day before. And it's something I'm going to have to do throughout the whole season. But I predict this plant will be able to grow a lot more food for me than I've ever been able to grow in the past because of loss from powdery mildew. All right, so the way I like to thin my plants with zucchini, for one, I check for any eggs. This one's had some something munching on it, so I'm gonna cut that leaf off. And any leaves where the stems are crossing and touching, I just wanna thin those out. So I'm gonna start with the leaves that I don't like, that have a little bit too much wear on them. Being very gentle. This is gonna get really long. Because I'm constantly trimming this one, this can continue to trail all the way down and we can come up with some solutions once it starts to touch the tower. I'll show you guys in another video what we can do about that. But the goal is for this plant to produce as long as possible. This one's touching, so I'm gonna take this leaf. I kind of like to think about it like you would when you're pruning an apple, where you don't want branches crossing over other branches. Let's see, we've got one. That's a gorgeous kohlrabi leaf. I'm gonna eat that one actually. So anything that's in the way, blocking sun, we're gonna take that off. And let's see, not touching.
There is a zucchini ready to be harvested soon back here. We've got some females that have flowered. I had a shortage of male flowers for a couple of days, but any of these, you know, just ugly parts I'm gonna take off. Get this as healthy looking as possible. And that's it, we've got nice airflow. I have already checked all of these leaves to make sure there were no eggs or any squash bug. And so by doing this, it's giving me good airflow. I can see if there's powdery mildew and catch it really quickly. I can also see the squash bugs or any eggs that have been laid on here. I've been looking for the vine borer eggs. They're little brown eggs. You might want to Google those or I'll put, in, I'll put an image of what those look like here. And I'm just looking for anything that may be causing this plant harm. And I can't do that if I can't get good eyes on it. So let me show you some that I have not pruned at all since they started growing. All right, so I'm just gonna look for any eggs. I think these, I think these um, nibbles are from a cucumber beetle. I've seen those around, but the stem looks good. And let's just start thinning one at a time. This is eggplant. I'm gonna cut that leaf. This is a hori hori knife. Really the only tool I use when tower gardening, except for maybe some shears, and then I have my little tool belt. I'll link all this below. So, so right in here, I can see some squash bugs. So if we had this thinned out, it'd be easier to see those. So here I'm just gonna start thinning things out, just uh, cutting any branches that are crossing. But a trick with growing zucchini also is this zucchini plant is south facing. So if you feel like your zucchini plants are a little bit smaller or aren't growing fast enough, a lot of times if you just turn your tower or make sure to place your zucchini on the south facing side of the tower where they can get the most sun, that will help. And also we wanna be checking to see if we have roots going into the tank. I don't like my roots to sit in the tank. They use more water and nutrients that way. It's actually transitioning the plant from aeroponics where the roots are grown in the air. That one has some powdery Switching them in. into a different method of growing, which is more of a deep water culture type hydroponic system. So I will reach in the tank and rip out any roots. If you have a ton of them, do a little bit each day for a couple of days so that you don't put the plant into shock too much. All right, I feel good about this one right now. There is a stem coming down and crossing over and touching some things down here, but I wanna thin this bottom one out. I don't wanna take too many more leaves off of this one. And I'm just gonna take a look and make sure there's no eggs or anything. There they are. I found some of the eggs. So we want to destroy those. And what I will use very rarely, but I am going to give it a spray today, is some thuricide. And thuricide will kill larvae when they hatch, when they take a bite out of a plant that has it on them. It's like a bacteria, causes their stomachs to have issues. And I don't like to use it a ton but you know there are compromises in growing food i need to replace the grocery store and there are some eggs on here and i want to make sure um, and i want to make sure you know i don't miss anything so i am going to do a spray of that when we're done and i'll show you what that looks like you can just run your fingers along the stems if you can't see them real well feel for any eggs i think that's it we got that one nice Let's work on the one on the bottom. All right, down here, I have cucumber growing along the bottom. And the reason I do that is because it can trellis all along the bottom. I don't mind if some of it touches the rocks, but I can also choose to have it go up if I want. So as my plants start to develop and things start to take shape, I can decide if I want it to go to the ground and be out of the way, or if I want to train it to go back up. This one, We've got a lot going on that we need to thin. I'm gonna start with this big leaf. This one's damaged. Little powdery mildew on that one. 
This one was broken at the stem. I'm actually gonna go ahead and take this one and we can start to let this plant have some space over here and push this one to that side if we want. It's easy to train your plants on a tower. Okay. This one has some cucumber attached. And any cucumber leaves that I just don't feel are doing really well, I'm gonna clean those up as well. Anything that looks damaged or crowded, I'm just gonna take those off. Okay, I see some eggs on my cucumber as well. The one benefit of growing using aeroponic tower gardens is you can see I don't have to be in the dirt or be in the soil to do my gardening. It's just overall easier to see plants, manage plants, and give them exactly what they need. So we end up growing a lot less plants than I typically would do in a soil garden when I was growing in the soil because I can tend to each plant a little more carefully. So I definitely want to get some thuricide, thuricide on here, which I think is called BT. And with growing using aeroponic tower gardens, you're using 95% less water plants grow faster and we get a higher right. yield. They say the yield is about 30% higher when using aeroponic tower gardens. And this is the reason why, just because we can give the plants everything they need a lot easier. So we get a higher yield per, per plant and we have less loss. These newer ones. You like to keep the new ones when possible because they typically are the healthiest. But I also, oh, more more eggs yeah so it's a good thing i chose to do this today um i also like to keep some of the big leaves because they are taking in they are the powerhouse of absorbing the sun right now so a balance zucchinis can have little pricklies Just be mindful of that you might want to wear gloves if that bother if that bothers you a lot of times when I get these new ones and they're all jumbled in together, I definitely like to thin those out. All right, we're looking better. Let's turn this a little. I'm gonna thin this guy. So you can see I'm heavily pruning these plants. I'm taking as much as 50% of the leaves off of these and it's okay to do that. Don't be afraid to thin them out really well. Um, I've never had it stunt the growth of my fruit or anything. By doing it this way, it just makes the plants healthier and helps me to maintain them a lot better. All right, we have a cucumber wanting to go up and it's already started to grab a hold of some of these things. We have a squash bug. I just smushed those right on the rim. So I'm gonna let this cucumber go where it wants to go and start weaving it up. Just like that. I'm going to go ahead and take this big leaf too because there's so many cucumbers through here and I feel like that's plenty for this plant. Some of the smaller ones will grow quickly and let's just clean up this cucumber. I'm going to send part of it this way. We'll send this part, This let's take this leaf off. It's sitting on the base. Anytime you have a leaf, any. Anytime you have a leaf sitting on the base, it's not good because, because the water can accumulate on the base. So we took that one off. This cucumber was definitely struggling. It was shaded. And just looking pretty beat up. So this one should do better now. Got some good space. We have an eggplant here and an eggplant here. Um, let's take a look at this. I don't love this going towards there, so I think I'm going to go ahead and take that one off. I scratched my zucchini. Um, this one can come off. Found more squash bugs. Here's a great example of an area I want to clean up. So we've got an old stem here, be very careful, uh, just useless leaf. Then we've got this one crossing over, 
There's one underneath it that's broken. We've got this one crossing over. We can start by, let's take this guy out. I don't love this one. And let's see, how many do we leave? One, two, three, four, five, six. I have six leaves left and I have one, two, looks like two zucchini, three female zucchini. I could take one more leaf, but I think I'm going to stop there. I don't love how close these three are. I'm tempted to take this one and let's do that. And we're just going to let these smaller ones grow the other way. That gives us nice airflow on this side. And then I've got some new leaves coming out that are going more this direction or straight up. There's also this one going straight up that's doing really well. So I think we're good on this plant. Ah. Oh, okay, so I broke this one. So we're going less leaves than I anticipated. There's not a lot of fruit on here, so it'll be okay. And we'll just let some of these big ones go. Let's, oh, you know what? I'm gonna cut this eggplant leaf. All right, flipping it over here. And this is how you can treat your towers if you feel like they're not getting enough sun or you just wanna not walk around the tower. You can just turn the tower. So I'm gonna take this one off. This is, so this is a vining squash. This is probably spaghetti squash. So that's gonna change things because this is gonna need space to trellis. And I don't know if I'll put a contraption next to it so it can grow on that. But for right now, we have this romaine towards the bottom. I'm just gonna clean up any old leaves on it. I'm not ready for lettuce, so we'll leave that. Um, you don't need to prune things like spaghetti squash like you do a zucchini. So I'm just gonna make sure there's nothing going after this one and make a note that this is gonna need to start trellising down. So let's turn this again and we're back to where we started. So I've got some cucumbers here that I wanna train and let's just set them along the base. These are dwarf cucumbers. So they're not gonna get super massive. They do bear a ton of fruit. I'd like to be able to see the fruit. One of the reasons I keep them towards the bottom is you can see the fruit really easily. I'm just gonna pinch off any leaves. I'm not loving on these. All right, and it's super sunny today. It's the only time I could film, but check it out. We've got lots of tower we can see now. We've got lots of airflow. It's easy for me to come in, see any fruit that needs to be pollinated. I don't see any more eggs. I am gonna give this a spray of the Thursside. Uh, this is the Thursside. The label is gone. I will link this in the description below. And I'm just recycling these Myers. I've said, you know, I don't trust Myers anymore, but I've got the bottles. So green for green. Thursside. Thursside's really brown. And I just eyeball it. And then for our powdery mildew, And again, I'm gonna spray this every day, front and back, if I have infested leaves. So anything that's already got powdery mildew on it, that's what I'll do. And I'm just gonna add a dose, a couple of tablespoons of the Dr. Broner's. That's good. And then I'm gonna add a couple of capfuls of the pH plus. And then I'll spray every three days or so after I get the bad parts under control. I don't see a whole lot of it. I cut the leaves off that I saw. Um, I don't see anything lingering, but I do wanna go ahead and give it a preventative dose just because we had all that rain yesterday and some of it popped back up. All of this goes, all of this will go get composted. Oh, I almost forgot about our little eggplant. That would have been devastating. Um, this, I will take the ins, I'll take the roots out and I'll recycle this. I'll use it again. No need to throw those away, even if they're broken. I use them until they completely disintegrate. These are winter crops and they really need to come out. So we're gonna harvest. This kohlrabi. And 
and I have plenty of greens to juice so all of this will go to the chickens and my chickens can't free range so I do intentionally grow greens just for the chickens oh that basil smells so good all right and over the next week or so i'll end up harvesting all of these greens because these are all winter greens and we are no longer in winter sometimes they're difficult to get off all right and then with when root systems are really big you just kind of got to tug at them a little sometimes they'll find other partner roots in there and get a little intertwined but not much and it got me in the face and that's it. And the reason why, it's because there's a ledge. So you can see these roots, that got me so wet, have created a ledge because they're going along the ledge. And then this is where it started to go down through one of the holes. So it's good we got this out. That was a mature plant. It was time to feed that to the chickens. And let's give this eggplant a better spot. All right, and if I had time, I would clean up this tower even more. I'd like my towers to be clean and airy, but that's it for today as far as getting work done on this tower. All right, guys, I have a gorgeous zucchini and a basket full of greens and cabbages that need to get inside. They're starting to wilt because it's super hot out here. But thanks for joining me today. I hope these tips and tricks help equip you to grow an abundance of gorgeous zucchini on your aeroponic tower garden. I'll see you in the next video.